Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Heel Toe Corner Club. I'm Marcus DiSabella, host of the podcast and also owner of Heel Toe Automotive, an online enthusiast parts website focused on giving Honda and Acura vehicle drivers uh, the best parts and value for their money with uh, a good mix of service thrown in there too. We are not a discount store. Don't misunderstand the difference between value and cheap. We provide value, which is stuff that makes your car work better and makes you happier and you are going to have to spend a couple of bucks but you're not going to get junk so there's my spiel uh here i am um gonna talk a little bit about suspension bushings right now uh, and focus in directly with the difference between rubber polyurethane and spherical bushings uh it's pretty common for people to you know, replace the rubber bushings in their chassis arms and their suspension arms, subframe bushings or whatever over time. Uh, these things can degrade and wear out, crack, etc. And there are certain applications in Honda and Acura cars where that is especially prevalent. Um, uh, so, you know, as enthusiasts, we got a rubber bushing, we need to replace it, let's put something better. Always trying to put something better. The If it went bad, there must have been something wrong with it, right? Well, after so much time in a car, bushings get soft. So even if they haven't um, cracked or broken or whatever, they're still feeling a little bit soft. And I think what a lot of people don't necessarily realize is just putting new rubber bushings in um, will restore a lot of the original uh, goodness that was in the chassis to begin with. It'll be firmer, it'll feel more direct, and you'll have more control with brand new original equipment parts. So we do sell genuine Honda and Acura bushings uh, and recommend, recommend them to people quite often because they are a really good upgrade over old worn out parts. Um, so, but if you are looking for something even more of an upgrade, something that's got a lot more feedback uh, to your hands and, and into your into your seat when you're driving. You can really feel like what's going on with the road when you've got more direct non-compliance bushings in your suspension. The other end of the spectrum is uh, spherical bushings. So these are like bearings that go into metal housings and they rotate or, or resist movement laterally or, or up and down or in a twisting motion. They actually allow the suspension pickup points to move exactly how that they were designed through the geometric stroke that they were designed to do. Rubber bushings have a little bit of give, so when the suspension compresses and goes up and down, the arm has a tendency to want to do a little bit of a wiggle or a push or a turn or a twist. And sometimes that's um, something that you want, but sometimes it's not. So a little bit of what they call compliance, that's what compliance is, is when there's a little bit of forgiveness in the shifting of the arm in the bushings. Um, a little bit of compliance is good for road comfort and also another term called NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness reduction that the original equipment designers built into the car because driving over everyday roads, you've got varying road surfaces, impacts that you're going to hit, things like that, that can make the car uncomfortable or noisy or just kind of like annoying to drive. Um, taking that NVH out of your rubber suspension bushings and putting in sphericals instead, you get a very direct movement of the suspension so it feels very good, but almost everything from the road communicates up into the chassis. Impacts become a little bit sharper um, and the car just feels more uncomfortable. You get more road noise coming up through the chassis. And so this is great for a race car or, or performance car that's on a controlled environment like a track where the, the surface is usually pretty smooth, it's noisy, you don't really care about NVH. What you care about is deftness of handling. Um, so on the other end of the spectrum, that's where sp spherical bushings lie. And a lot of people look at those and say, you know what, I would love to have a car that handles like a race car or a go-kart, but this is a street car and I don't want it to be uncomfortable. And that's where people go to polyurethane. But there's a problem with polyurethane, and that is that it, while it is somewhat of a compromise, a mix between rubber and, sphere, and spherical bushings in terms of how they act, it's a mix of the negatives 
<laughs> in other words, uh, polyurethane bushings are an upgrade to almost nothing in terms of like being a complete upgrade. Now, let me explain that because I don't want to like trigger some folks with that statement. It is what I feel to be true, but hold out for just a moment, right? Polyurethane has often been thought to say like, well, I'm going to go just short of s spherical bushings with this uh, setup, right? Polyurethane will have a little bit of vibration damping. It'll have a little bit of compliance that the spherical bushings do not. Therefore, I'm going to get a lot more direct road feel and feedback without the impact of having full spherical bushings in place. Generally speaking, that has some truth to it. It Polyurethane does have more compliance than spherical bushings do, but not as much as you would think. It's not anywhere near the middle between rubber and a spherical bushing. It's much closer to a spherical bushing than a lot of people would think. And even though there is some, like, maybe some mild softening of the corners of what would happen on a sharp impact with a spherical bushing doesn't really get damped all that much with polyurethane. This is a similar concept to uh, the engine mounts podcast that I did talking about polyurethane versus rubber there as well. Polyurethane has almost no internal damping ability. So any vibration or impact that happens on one end almost 100% travels through it, unlike with rubber where uh, vibration gets internally damped, like the material in rubber actually will stop noise and vibration from passing through it. So on the other end of that rubber bushing, you don't feel very much at all. Polyurethane, you'll feel quite a bit more. The only way around this is if they make them a little bit smaller and you're supposed to pack them with grease to take up the tolerance difference. And now you've got something that's a little bit on the looser side, which can create more noise. And if you don't use grease, even if they do fit tightly, now you've got the potential of there being noise as the bushings twist and turn in the control arm um, flange housings where they go into. The bushings don't necessarily um, you know, work that well if you don't lubricate them either. Some polyurethane has some internal, like uh, inherent lubricity to them. So when they slip and move, they won't make noise. But after enough road grime and dirt and whatever gets in there, the potential for making noise is always there. And then there's the thought that polyurethane somehow lasts longer than rubber does. And I don't think that that's true either. Polyurethane is a more rigid material and it is more prone to splitting than uh, rubber is. Rubber can wear, compress, deform, get cracks in it, whatever. They can definitely break. Polyurethane can break also, and it doesn't necessarily do it quickly. Um, you know, they can last a certainly a good long time, but so does rubber. Rubber lasts a good long time too. So how, how long is a long time to you? 10,000 miles, 50,000 miles. If you've got like, you know, a Civic or an Integra or, or a TSX that's got 130,000 miles on it, and you're just now kind of thinking about replacing sus sus suspension bushings, and the car is already like 10 or 20 years old, like, to me, that a 20-year-old car that's got original bushings in it that are still kind of working, those lasted a really, really long time. And new factory ones will last equally long period of time if they're installed correctly. So, I don't believe that polyurethane offers a longevity improvement. They do offer a performance improvement, but I don't think that it's a compromise with what you would get with spherical bushings. The main thing that you're going to see a benefit with polyurethane over spherical bushings is the cost. The cost of uh, spherical bushings can be pretty high because the bearings that you're going to get should be high quality. If they're not, they'll be cheaper and then they'll you know, rattle and make noise and and all of that. Um, but high quality bearings, you know, they cost a few bucks. And then the bearing is pretty much never exactly the same size that the bushing needs to be so that there's some kind of an aluminum or steel housing that fits the bushing into the control arm. And then, of course, it's not going to be as wide as it needs to be either. So you got to have some spacers made, you know, the fast line bushings that we make, they're, they're heat treated alloy bushing housings that the bearing goes into, and then we've got stainless steel uh, machined 
spacers that actually fit them in place. So the, the reason why spherical bushings are expensive is because the bearings themselves are expensive and then you've got these other fabricated parts that have to be precision machined to fit in the press fit locations of the control arm. Polyurethane, they don't have to worry about any of that. You can use kind of a generic pin that can make the mold for polyurethane out of, you know, fairly inexpensive material. They're simple molds. And, um, you know, they just bang them out. The material is not expensive. And the tolerances don't have to be very tight either. So, yeah, basically polyurethane is just one of those things that, you know, if you are building a race car or performance car on a budget, you're, you're going to go there for sure. Like, they do the job that a non-compliance bushing needs to do, uh, and they do it at a relatively low cost. But for y'all on street, you know, street cars, I think you're going to find that you are going to get some more non-compliance out of them, but you're not going to get as much as you necessarily would want to have with a spherical bushing that isn't going to have the same drawbacks that a spherical bushing is going to have. So the real thing that you should be doing when you're suspension bushing upgrading is take a look at the location of those bushings. Not all bushings need to be replaced with the same thing. For example, the front lower control arm on a TSX or an Accord um, that has like, they're kind of like a triangle shape. There's a compliance bushing at the front and a shock mount bushing and then another bushing that mounts to the frame. Well, we wholeheartedly recommend people get the spherical bushing for the compliance bushing. And the reason why is because it doesn't have any kind of like load in any direction, it just kind of has to float in the middle. And yeah, okay, so like going over different road surfaces, the arm can get tugged in certain ways, but all that bushing really needs to do is rotate. The rotational motion is a perfectly natural thing for a spherical bearing to do. And it does it without impact, and it doesn't without uh, having a lot of, you know, negative like directional loads on it that would cause you discomfort while you're driving. But the other bushing that mounts the control arm to the frame, uh, if you want to control how much movement that the arm ultimately has, we have a spherical bushing to go there, which we recommend more for like track or performance cars. Or you could put a polyurethane bushing there if you wanted to spend a little less money because, again, those, those bearings are expensive. But in my personal car, it's rubber. I just use a factory rubber bushing in my TSX there because I've already got the non-compliance taken care of with the compliance bushing being replaced. The other frame mounted bushing can have a little bit of movement and it is really not a lot. The bushing's got a thin section to it. Even though it's a rubber bushing, it will still uh, absorb some of the road vibrations and noise, but it doesn't really move around that much. So it doesn't dull the driving experience nearly as much as the driving experience is sharpened with the compliance bushing. So I'm hoping that's making some sense. Like in the same control arm, I'm in two locations, I'm using two different bushings because of how they're loaded and because some compromise is needed somewhere. And the last bushing in that control arm is where the shock fork mounts to. Now, an argument can be made here that a non-compliance bushing on a shock mount is even more critical because that's directly mounting the shock into the car and then you know you'll get the most accurate damper feel like the the dampers will be able to do their job the most accurately if they're not mounted with rubber on either side well this is generally true the quality of dampers that you would need to have in com combination of the quality of tires that you need to have for all that feedback to make any sense is like way off the charts compared to what most people have even if you have like you know, some BC racings or whatever, and some street performance tires. Neither one of those is a fine enough controlled, you know, uh, damper or tire to require a completely non-compliant shock mounting. Um, all you're really going to do is make road impacts more harsh, but the car isn't necessarily going to handle better. So taking some harshness out of the situation, put a rubber bushing there. Or you could put a polyurethane, but like I said, you're going to have that harshness that you don't really necessarily want. Rubber bushings really do work fantastically well in both of those other control arm locations. So, uh, so there you go. A little bit of a difference between rubber, polyurethane, and um, spherical bushings. And I will make uh, a last mention here, hard rubber bushings that are marketed by Hard Race. They are rubber bushings, and they're 
supposedly a higher durometer than the originals. I don't really know um, how they measure it. Uh, I talked to them before about this and they said that different bushings have different firmnesses depending on what bushing it is and what the location is and all of this. I personally have a hard time believing that Hard Race is fine tuning the durometer of their bushings to every vehicle's um, you know, bushing location and, and use case. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're you know, overseas Taiwan made bushings that are replacement parts for originals and they put a, a harder durometer in there than something else harder than what they normally would do is that the same more or less than the original durometer who really knows i mean that i don't i don't imagine that they're actually measuring the durometers for every single bushing that they're they're making from an oem a new oem bushing i mean maybe they are but as strong as the brand in is and as good as the parts are i just have a hard time believing that they're that sophisticated because they're not you know, honestly, they don't cost that much money. You know, it makes more sense that they've got, you know, an array of durometers that they could be making their bushings out of. And they go on the harder side of what they're able to do for most of those bushings because they're trying to give a little bit more of that road feedback that you're going to get um, from a, a more non-compliant bushing without jumping to polyurethane or sphericals. Um, and how effective are they compared to originals? kind of hard to say it's a it's a subjective thing and like i said also a brand new factory bushing is going to work really really well too so hard race is a great brand uh for for a, a so-called mild upgrade or what people might call an oem plus type of upgrade just don't bank on it being like a world's different uh experience than you would have with a lot of oem bushings in place that were brand new so that's kind of my opinion on that. Um, hopefully this podcast was helpful. People ask the difference between these bushings all the time. And polyurethane always seems like the quick answer to, I want to upgrade its suspension, but I don't want to spend a lot. And that is generally true, but just be aware, you're not getting a compromise in the discomfort that you would be getting from spherical bushings, especially if you don't put spherical bushings everywhere and you just put them where they're going to do the most good. I would say focus maybe on that and keep rubber in the other spots where you want to keep your comfort um, balance with the performance to your liking. All right. Thank you very much for listening. And um, make sure you leave a comment here. I'm, I, there may be some mixed opinions about some of this. People love their polyurethane suspension bushings. And, you know, I, anytime I've used them, they've worked out great. It's just not necessarily in a car you want to be driving every day. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Heel Toe is in your corner.